because of just to, to because I uh, have the money for the game, but not for it. Yeah, yeah. Well, maybe it's mostly related to this and this uh, obvious oh, okay. writing. Uh, then, then, yes. But I put what you wanted, so you had a really special thing. <laughs> We only had VAT yesterday, ah, we didn't have Wow. This one? Today should be our wow. Uri and Shangri Lake. Again. Oh, I didn't put it. No, I didn't. Okay. So they have the copyright scripts. You can use the elevator on the stairs. <coughs> you don't know. He, he got it like an 11. <laughs> yeah, <I think> yeah. <laughs> they made an exception, gave him a, a 11. No, he got a, he got an eleven. Professor Alt, you're the second person from Boston that we have. We had Daniel Berman, but yeah, but I guess he's from BU and you're from BC.
Oh, it'd be you, okay. Uh, I guess developing countries, OECD, from like a U.S. Pr approach, tax policy. Yeah, U.S. approach. Yeah, yeah. He talked a little bit about his experience negotiating tax treaties. And, yeah. Yeah, international fiscal association. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. I don't know what to, what to do when lectures are supposed to start at a certain time and people don't all come because on the one hand, I kind of want to reward the people who are on time and get started. On the other hand, it's not very efficient because then you have to go over things. So let's wait a few minutes before you know what the rest of your colleagues' plans are. Or we sent the bat signal out. The, the bat, the signal. bat signal. We have. They haven't responded yet. But I can tell you, Joanna said she was very pleased with this class. It was much more lively than the class of, of last year. We like asking questions. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Why are you looking at me? I think we're are on this side of the, <laughs> of yeah. the table. Because as you know, there's, there's, Charles knows the American system is the so-called Socratic method, which is just questions and answers to the responses. Some people throw up and cry during class. <laughs> and. Uh, <laughs> well, during the first year, it's very scary. So yeah. it's a big, you know, it's 150 people, and the professor says, well, Miss, what's your name? What's oh, yeah. your Vandenberg. Said, no, My name's Carla. Uh, Carla Vandenberg. I She's Dutch. I did my homework. Ah, Carla from the back. <coughs> well, Miss Vandenberg, what was the plaintiff's argument in the Jones case? Oh, yeah, and then I have two hands. Are you sure that's right? Now, what have we done this? Or that? <laughs> have you read the case, Miss Carla? Have you read the case? You're being very nice, actually. <laughs> oh, and then being angry. Oh, yeah, like really. Okay. I, I'm very nice. But, uh, <laughs> oh, Watch yeah. out, people who say that. <laughs> there's, a, there's a famous movie. The pa yeah, the paper chain. paper chain. Did you have the hairy hand, Professor? Uh, I, had a, I had one of the guys that, were, that was modeled on several different. Okay. Things. This is a this is a movie about the experiences in the first year of Harvard Law School. And the professor is really very tough. And sweet. But I'm not in that. I'm not in that. So, so you you have experience with that kind of. Experience. Yeah, my first day of law school. Uh, yeah, the, the professor, uh, the, the, nobody had read really, so the professor laid down on the table and 
uh, one student sort of vomited actually. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was, it was. I'm glad it wasn't me because I hadn't really read either. <laughs> so. And it's in front of 150 people, so it's easy to read. Uh, maybe a little less for my case, at least. But. You should try the old uh, US thing with the ones that are late. Yeah, that's Use the Socratic method, yeah. <laughs> Did you read the case that I sent you? They all did. Well, I think we look at Socratic because at least we've got a majority of the students in the disability. The, I, I've got I've got your pictures here, but I'm not really visible. So you're Charles and me. Giorgio Beretta. Yeah, Giorgio Beretta. Francesco. And Lillo. That's Francesco. And Carla. And you are? Marie. And I will not remember you. But you can remember Francesco because his surname is like uh, the Lindo. It looks like a mafia. Uh, <laughs> no, no, no. Actually, it's one of the most famous contemporary American novelists. Oh, I enjoy. The Lindo. Don the Lindo. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 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 Interesting. I mean, that's the, no, he is very well known. I'm joking because I am the bad, the bad guy because the Retta in America is like the guys, yeah. you know. <laughs> so I am the bad guy. Well, so I know a little bit about you because I looked at your, your bios. And I can tell you a little bit about me. I was a professor for a long time at Boston College in the U.S. And then I worked for a long time at the OECD where I was the senior advisor for the Center for Tax Policy, which was what did a lot of the things we're going to be, going to be talking about today. Um, and what I'm uh, planning to do is go for a while until I get tired and you get tired and then we'll take a short break and then I'll come on and tell you get through the material that over with you. <clears throat> and what I want to try to talk today about is, uh, is tax competition. And I told Charles uh, he has a job, but you can help him with the job that whenever I do this, I often get so focused on my notes that I forget to switch the slides. So if I'm talking about something that's not on the slide, you know, Charles is the principal responsibility of the rest of you have derivative responsibility. So we are in good hands. We're in good hands. Yeah. So we're going to talk about tax competition. It's a word that we hear a lot. It's uh, used a lot, but it's not really much, much analyzed. So what I want to do is look at sort of both the theory behind the analysis of tax competition, and then look a bit at the history of how it developed from, from the 90s through today with BEPS, and then talk a little bit about the future. And I want to talk both about sort of the substantive issues, but I also want to talk about what we could call the institutional developments, because in some ways the institutional developments are 
almost more important than, than, than the substrate is. So let's sort of begin at the beginning. Uh, let's look first in general terms about the uh, economic theory behind the corporate tax or taxing income from capital generally and how that relates to tax competition. Now, I don't know if any of you have an economics background, but I thought it was useful. And I don't know, has anyone heard of optimal tax theory? Does that ring any, any bells? Well, optimal tax theory basically says there shouldn't be a corporate tax. And the analysis goes, when, when you've moved from a, a closed domestic economy to a globalized worldwide system of international investments, where there's a worldwide interest rate and hurdle rate for investment and capital can flow to where the returns are best. And uh, the uh, investor, the taxpayer, is always looking for the, the best after-tax rate of return. So if a country imposes a corporate tax, then that will drive down the after-tax return, which is what the investor is interested in, that will mean that he will only invest in projects in the country that have a higher before-tax before -tax rate of return. That means there'll be less investment in the country. If there's less investment in the country, then there's less productivity in the country. If there's less productivity in the country, uh, there's less jobs and there's less economic activity. And so actually the country is worse off if uh, they have a corporate tax than if they, if they don't. Now, that's a economic theory. I have a question. So does, does this apply to, is that just to, for the existence of tax or for tax rates? Like well, how the existence of anything that reduces the, the rate of return. In other words, okay. in a world without taxes, the rate of return is the before tax rate of return. As soon as you start imposing a tax, that reduces the after tax rate of return. That right. means you'll only that that means you'll only invest in a project which had an even higher before tax rate of return. So the return will be the internet. You'll meet the international hurdle rate. But that means there are projects in your country which would have been invested in if there's no tax, which won't be invested. That means there's going to be less capital in your country. That means there's less productivity, less productivity, less activity. If you're going to keep the same level of expenditures, there's got to be a tax either on labor or on consumption, but not on capital. That's the argument. That's okay. the, that's the economic theory. Well, like uh, so many economic theories, uh, that hasn't been the case, because that would predict that corporate taxes would, under these competitive pressures, corporate taxes would disappear. But they haven't disappeared. They're still there. The rates, uh, the amounts of revenue and the rates have gone down somewhat, but it's still important. And so then you can ask why. And one reason is, again, another, we're going to get off this economic stuff pretty quick, but I wanted to get the background out there. Uh, do some of you know what economic rents are? The above tax, the sort of special things that make a jurisdiction special, like the classic one is sort of natural resources. You can tax natural resources because they, they don't move, they give you a higher rate of return. So there are, there are economic rents that you can tax. There's the existence of a market 
they have to be safe. 